What's up everyone, it's Brian here from Exact IT Solutions and welcome to another video on our YouTube channel. Today I wanna to talk about the war. The war that you're in, if you're in business with hackers that you're losing, that you probably don't even know you're losing. But I'm gonna show you some things today to uh, show you why you're losing and how prevalent things are. Um, but before we get into that, remember we don't get uh, paid for this channel, we don't do Patreon, and we don't annoy you with ads. The only thing that we do ask is if you do enjoy the content on this channel or you're enlightened or educated in any way, please hit that like button. It helps other people searching for content like this find it. YouTube bumps it up in the search rankings. I won't go into all that here, but it helps us out tremendously. So that's the only ask of you that we have for giving you this content for free. So without further ado, let's jump into the content for today. All right, so as I mentioned, the, the, the issue that many business owners are faced with, that they may or not, may not be aware of the issues. Um, what, unfortunately, if you're a business owner today, you're in a war with cyber criminals. And unfortunately, you also need to dedicate money and resources to making sure that your business does not become a victim of the cyber criminals so I say this all the time on this channel if you go back and watch my other videos you know there is a war going on right now if you are a CEO of a company or you run a company uh, or you're charged with managing a division of a company you want to listen to this video you want to listen to my advice because the reality of it is, is if you're not in tune to what's going on and you're not doing this stuff, or you may be somewhat aware, but you know your business isn't doing anything or isn't doing enough to combat these, it's only going to be a matter of time before you have a problem in your business. And it's my goal to enlighten you so you understand it. So if there's anything that I go over today, or if there's anything that I mention that you're not sure about, or you have a question about, drop it in our comments below and if you've experienced anything that i'm about to talk about we'd love to hear your experience share it below um, let us know what has gone on in your business in your life when it comes to things like ransomware and cyber attacks because these things are becoming more prevalent and the more information that we can share with one another the smarter we can become unfortunately these are this is one of those things cybersecurity that gets brushed under the rug a lot and nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to come out and admit and tell their story about how they got hacked or what happened when they got hacked or what happened after they got attacked. So I want to illustrate to everybody what the heck's coming. I mean, look, the reality of it is, is you're going to be hit with cybersecurity regulations, whether it comes from the government, whether it comes from the people you sign contracts with that write checks to your business, whether it comes from uh, consumers who use your app or buy your product and they want to know that their information is protected, um, there's going to be a major shift towards not only companies but individuals requiring you to pay attention to this stuff and put money towards it and protect it. Um, and hackers are getting better and better at exploiting all different kinds of businesses and entities. We see it all over the place. We see software with bugs being put in it that then hackers can use to further attacks against other companies, as we saw with the SolarWinds attack. And we see a lot of different things going on. So I'm just gonna go through. Uh, what I normally do is I, I go and curate articles and bring them on this channel and highlight them and try to talk about uh, the things that happen within those attacks. Uh, but I'm not gonna do that. Today, I'm gonna to go through just simple Google searches that you could quite frankly do yourself uh, to just see what the heck's going on out there. And rather than say, hey, who got hacked and attacked this week, because that's our video series that I started about a year ago, um, I'm gonna switch gears and kind of tell everybody what the heck's going on every single day. Um, hopefully shorten the videos, but show you what the heck goes on out there every single day day and what you need to do and what you need to start looking at and maybe 
somebody at your company who's in charge of cybersecurity or hiring somebody who will do that for you um, if that's not something that you feel like you would be good at or your business should even be getting involved in uh, you know there's different options for you and I'm going to highlight all that for you as we go through these different events so I'm going to jump in first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up here a, uh, a Google search okay so I just did a quick Google search here on Google News and I did, um, and what I did was I, um, I will do uh, the past 24 hours. Um, and I'm just going to show you, I'm going to search a couple of different things uh, while I do this video. Um, but the first one I'm going to do is cyber attack. Just searching Google News for cyber attack articles in the last 24 hours. And you know the big one you probably heard it on the news cyber attack in florida towns water supply shows vulnerability of infrastructure um, i know a little bit about this one i don't know everything about all the articles i'm about to go through and 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 point out but i do know a little bit about this one and i do know that the uh hack happened through a, a tool called team viewer which is a remote access tool um, it's not a very good one you shouldn't be using it anybody that's taking cybersecurity seriously would know that you know team viewer is a very very uh vulnerable or it's had problems in the past a lot of problems in the past enough problems where i steer clear of it if i see it on a system i remove it um my you know that's what we do here at my company so um, you won't find team viewer on any systems that we have or, or systems that we manage um it, just because it's just not a very good product in our, our in our eyes and the fact that this was on such a critical system in a florida um, town's water supply is absolutely insane to me um and this is how bad cybersecurity is out there um and the other thing is is that not only was team viewer used but the when the hacker got in he was able to uh, get control of the systems that and that put chemicals into the water one of those chemicals being lye, um, they were they were attempting to uh, increase the amount of lye in the water supply. Which imagine that what, what kind of issues that could have caused um, if they were able to successfully move through that. And I and I guarantee you, as I move through here, it's going to be a lot about the Florida Florida water supply, Florida water supply. Um, but you know. You know, here we go here. Cyber Warfare report on 2020 shows triple digit increase across all malware types. There was a 320% increase in malware uh, and, and ransomware uh, in 2020. Um, so this is Oldsmar Water Plant, uh, again in Florida. Uh, U.S. cyber weapons were leaked. And, and this is basically um, the cyber weapons that were leaked uh, with the NSA and they are now being used uh, probably the team a team viewer exploit was part of the tool set uh, and now that tool set is being used to hack this Florida uh, water supply company um, North Korea is using cyber attacks to update nukes uh, Hello Kitty only almost certainly behind the CD uh, project ransomware attack that's actually the uh, group that developed cyberpunk 2077 I think that's the name of the game um, I, I don't I'm not familiar with it but apparently they got hit um, just moving on to page two here again this is only the last 24 hours um, sensory immersive cyber range training don't even know what that is but um, you know this is the uh, the same thing the cyberpunk 2077 uh, brow tox council leaders calling for stricter stricter penalties for hackers at their cyber attack that is a town i believe this one's in england um brock's tau um i don't i actually don't know i can I probably click into it and figure it out um i've never heard of brock's tau so I, that's why i assumed it was england but i don't know um, i'll try to figure that out for you uh city council oh no this looks like it's in the united states uh I don't know but yeah that's it so um you know moving right moving right along here don't want to go in there uh cyber terrorism cyber just this is uh 
cyber insurance risk framework, it sounds like the cyber insurance uh, companies are getting together to try to put together a framework for you all to use. I'm going to tell you, the cybersecurity frameworks, uh, we already have NIST. There's a lot of them out there. Pick one, follow it. Um, but you're going to start to see a lot of this. You're going to start to see a lot of companies forcing other companies to use cyber or to use a cybersecurity framework like NIST. And I guarantee you that whatever the cyber insurance risk framework comes up with, it's going to be very similar to the NIST cybersecurity framework because they're all very similar. When you're dealing with compliance, all these things are very, very similar. Um, you know, it's just what lens you look through to determine, you know, the state of your data security and things like that. Um, stolen Chatham County data post, posted online after incident. We talk about that all the time. Chatham, I, I would assume, is, is in New York. Um, personal information compromised in uh, cyber attack believed to be largest in university history. That's Colorado University. Um, Nebraska Medicine, UNMC, patients concerned about hackers. Uh, that's the Chatham County again, Chatham County again. Orleans Inspector General report identifies most at risk, at risk city entities. Um, cybersecurity today, phishing service taken down. Um, investments in emerging tech will become more important. And this is uh, probably about companies that are doing tech. Uh, Dayton's drinking water systems have layers of security intended to curb hacking. So uh, this is probably in response to the Florida hackers and that town wanting to know th how what they're what they're up to. Um, web application security huge. Um, making sure that your websites are not delivering or or, or being hacked and able to uh, put uh, malware on people's systems. Um, that's very common where hackers will take over your website because nobody's really looking at it and managing it and then they'll load malware onto certain pages. It might not even be pages that your website actually has just because they, they create, they get access to let's say your WordPress and they create a page and then they're just using your web domain and your server to send out malware to various people using phishing links and things like that. They could target your customers thinking that, oh, well, you're, if I send them this link to this person's website, they're gonna think, oh, I, I do business with them, I trust them, so I'm gonna click the link. They click the link and boom, they have malware. So this is how legitimate business sites, websites get hacked when nobody's paying attention to them and nobody's analyzing the security and making sure that things are up to date with those websites and they don't have a vulnerability that can be exploited. When they do, it allows hackers to create a trust realm within that environment and then the people that they can attack, whether it be the company itself, employees within the company, or people that you, partners and vendors that you work with, these are common attacks that we see out there where websites are then transformed into malware delivery servers um, and you know and not the business website anymore now the website will still look the same it won't change it's just when you go to that url or that web address you're going to get malware installed or it's going to prompt you to and you know install malware i um, mean that can be done very easily that can be done by just you know hey this website wants to run flash okay boom boom and now the, the payload is on the system which then can allow somebody to send more uh, more viruses and more malware to your systems. All right, so I'm going to switch gears a little bit here and uh, change the Google search up to ransomware. And uh, past 24 hours, same thing. Um, we're going to see a lot of the Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, but here we go. Ransomware group posts stolen North Carolina, Carolina, North Carolina County health records um, and personally died of identifiable information. And this is a problem that you need to be aware about. If you get hit with ransomware, more than likely the data is gonna get stolen first out of your network. Um, number one, you should be able to detect that when somebody's moving a massive amount of data off of your network. Um, if you're not able to detect that, then you're probably not doing cybersecurity good enough. Um, and somebody should be able to watch that and, and monitor that for you and your business. Um, you're also going to have to deal with the fact that they're going to post it publicly to get you to pay the ransom or to get you to cave into their demands. Uh, and that's a big deal too, because 
a lot of people think, oh, well, if I get ransomware, I just need to have my backups. And that's not true. Um, your files will be, become encrypted. You will not be able to access or unlock them until you, you cave into their demands. Now, if you pay them the, the ransom, a lot of times you get your data back. A lot of times companies are like, oh, we don't have to pay the ransom. We have backups. And then boom, they get hit with this, what's known as double extortion. And that double extortion will, will be a threat to post all the data that was encrypted. They will tell you they stole it first, and then they will tell you we're going to release it. Now, I will tell you, based on history, there are companies that have, have called their bluff and said, no, you won't. And guess what happens? A couple months later, the data starts showing up on the dark web or start, is starting to be uh, posted on hacking forums. Um, that then other hackers can start to use to exploit the same company. Um, and plus, you, there's information in there that you really don't want getting out. You know, you're, if you're entrusted to protect uh, health information or personally identifiable information, and that gets out, now you have to deal with legal issues and hire lawyers and public relations firms. So this stuff is very real, and you could find yourself in the middle of this very quickly. I know of tons of business owners who had no idea what this stuff was when it happened to their business. Like they were completely blindsided by, you know, getting hit with ransomware and they were completely blindsided by what the, even the heck it was. Like, what do you mean we can't access our files? Like that is a very real thing. Um, and in today's day and age with the fact that ransomware has probably been around for, um, you know, the better part of a decade now or close to it, um, people should be really aware of this stuff and be aware that not only can businesses get hit, but you're in, you as an individual uh, can get hit as well. Um, you know, Baltimore County School Board approves $1.7 million for cybersecurity. You know, I've talked, I talked about this relentlessly, this Baltimore County incident, and I also talk about the fact that um, after an incident happens, it, it's amazing how uh, companies and, and organizations and entities find the money to budget for cybersecurity. And I guarantee you that this Baltimore County School Board would have approved $3.4 million uh, uh, budget for cybersecurity based on what happened to them and the fallout from that. Um, it cost them way more than than you know, that 1.7 million figure there, but that's the cost for them to do cybersecurity the right, day, right way, and I applaud them for moving in that direction. There are a lot of companies out there who will get hit with ransomware and do absolutely nothing. There was a, a story that I read about last week where a company got ransomware and two weeks later, they got hit by the same group again because they didn't take care of what they, what the hackers were able to exploit in order to get in and deploy the ransomware in the first place. So we got a British Columbia and Canada real estate company. It sustains an unusual cyber attack. Uh, there's our cyberpunk again. Uh, so 2020 sees ransomware increase by over 400%. So uh, I guess it's 358% overall and ransomware increased by 435%. Um, so 2020 was a heck of a year and I can only imagine that this will go higher this year because these guys aren't going to stop. They aren't going to. They aren't going to go away. They're going to continue to try to make money. I did a. I did a video a couple of weeks ago on how much money, uh, how much money has been traced in Bitcoin back to these criminals. Uh, the number is astounding. I highly encourage you to go back and watch that video. But, you know. 435 percent it'll probably go up 600 700 800 percent next year and if you don't if you think you have a business that's too small that no one cares about that you know doesn't have any data that anybody wants none of that is true if if you have a weak system and a vulnerable system or you have weak employees or you're not training your employees on what to look for when an email comes in or what a web a malicious website could potentially look like and you're not putting in the technology that can even prevent your employees from getting there you are going to be faced with dealing with ransomware or some type of attack in the very near future it's a numbers game and you know there are companies that are doing the right thing and, and investing in this so you know they're going to be less than an attractive target for these guys the low-hanging fruit for them are small businesses 
that don't have the money, that don't think they're a target. They might not hit you for a million dollars. They might not hit you for a hundred thousand dollars, but they'll hit you for 20, 30, 40 grand. Uh, and that's something that you need to be aware of. And not only are they doing the ransomware, but they're also doing, you know, just just scamming. They're 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 emailing, they're emailing your your accountants and your your accounts payable and people that you're doing business with. Maybe you have a relationship with a vendor who you constantly send money to, and they could use your email to, uh, or use your vendor's email to say, hey, you need to send us this money to pay this bill, and then you go and send the money to pay the bill, not realizing that you just sent it to a hacker because they just sent you their bank account information to wire the money, and it really wasn't the company you thought you were doing business with, but because their email was hijacked, you thought you were interacting with somebody from that company, but you really weren't. You were interacting with a hacker who had control of that uh, email email system. So, uh, free ransomware preparedness assessment um, is there. So yeah, this is this is all stuff that's out there. You should definitely do a, a an assessment on your systems. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can get that done. You can probably do things yourself. I would recommend a professional come in. You don't know what you're looking at when it when it comes to this a lot of times. So get you know get a, uh, a professional. Uh, Emotet dismantled trick box e loader bizarre loader step in so that's that's what happened e Emotet is a uh, payload uh, way that it's, it's basically when you click on it let's say you get a phishing email and you click on that link what gets downloaded is actually not the ransomware it's it's typically called a, a payload or some kind of uh, or, or some kind of uh, malware or Trojan that then allows a, an attacker to then download and install more software to the uh, system that that was infected here. So Emotet was dismantled, but then these other botnet networks or these trick bot type networks, um, they they just filled in the space. So Emote went away, and their service was no longer able to do what it does. And these guys came right in and, and filled in that filled in that void. Um, and that's typical. You see that in, in business. You know, a business goes out, uh, uh, you know, your favorite pizza place goes out of business, you know, and, and they, that gets filled in by other pizza places, Papa John's and, and Domino's and all those other places. There's all these other businesses and services that will come in and take the place of something that goes out of business or is, you know, forcefully dismantled by the authorities. So I just want to be people aware of that because it's like, uh, you see things like, hey, Emotet was dismantled, but so what? There's 15 other people, and quite, quite frankly, they probably didn't dismantle Emotet enough to where the people who were involved with that can't just go start up something else very similar, you know, tomorrow. So, um, you know, just moving right along, Mailware Slinger step up efforts to target gamers on Discord. You know, that's another way. Like, you, you got to look at this, guys. You got Discord, Teams, uh, you got um, uh, Upwork, uh, not, uh, you got, uh, the, I'm thinking of the stock symbol, which is work. It's, uh, uh, can't think of the name right now, I'm sorry. But, you know, all these chat programs that people use, like, like Discord, uh, like Teams, um, there's, you know, Zoom's coming out with a, with a chat thing. Salesforce has a chat thing. All of these ways to communicate similar to email are going to be ways that your business can be exploited. Hackers can take control of, of users' accounts. Like think about Teams. Somebody could log, somebody could take control of a Teams uh, login or can log into Teams as an employee of your company, as an external user. And then they can start sending you links. Now you have a, a level of trust there with the people in Teams. Like if think about it this way: if 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 you were if we were colleagues and working in the same company on Teams, and I sent you a message with a link, would you think twice about clicking on that link? A lot of people wouldn't think twice about it. Many people wouldn't think twice about it because you assume that an employee that you work with that you know. 
uh, and that you probably trust is going to send you something that's normal course of business but you have no idea that their their teams was hijacked or or is it under control by somebody else that's not them and then you're going to click on that link and it's really really uh, one of the new things that I cautioned about back in the spring when I saw the rapid adoption of teams without providing proper security training around it um, I probably was a little bit ahead of the game kind of thinking about that stuff I'm sure there's other people out there that were that thought about it but the reality of it is is that now we're starting to see you know these chat programs that people move to during COVID be used to deliver malware and and, uh, and I'm totally not surprised about it so um, and, th and th this just goes on and on and on you can do this same exact thing that I'm doing right here by just going to Google typing in cyber attack typing in uh, hack uh, hack attack businesses hack ransomware whatever term you want to use change this setting here under tools to past 24 hours you can do a week it doesn't matter you can just look at all of them um, it doesn't really matter what you look at or how you look at this you're just going to see a ton a ton of of content um, i like to do the last 24 hours because you can see all these articles were published four hours ago six hours ago seven hours ago and there are pages and pages and pages of stuff i'm just going to click on number seven because i like number seven and let's just see what we come up with here and then we're going to uh, wrap up the video oh good five best practices for for today's expanded security perimeter that's good stuff for you guys to read among among the stuff you're going to find in here is actually stuff on how you can how you can prevent this stuff from happening in your business and if you don't think that this stuff is preventable it is now i'm not going to sit here and say that you can hire a company that's going to hack proof your business and you're never going to get hacked but you you can reduce your chances of getting rid uh, getting hacked significantly by implementing you know the right cybersecurity practices using a cybersecurity framework what have you so you know new security risks await post pandemic travelers of course that's going to be something that gets exploited when people start traveling again uh, you know. North Korea stole 300 million in cryptocurrency to fund nukes. Don't know what that's about. Um, probably stole it through the use of ransomware would be my guess. Um, and here's why some Google, here's why some people get more phishing and emails and malware spam. Um, I think this article has to do with, with uh, how more people on Google, on Gmail, get more phishing and malware spam. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that, quite frankly. Um, number one, Gmail is the biggest email, free email provider out there. So, you know, people are going to guess, you know, whatever up front at gmail.com. It's a very easy way. Google does have very good spam and malware filters, but there's a lot of things that you can change within the settings that if you don't know what you're changing, you could allow these, you know, malicious emails to come in. But I will share this with you and I'll wrap up with this. Mal malware delivered links and malware delivered through email is still the number one way that businesses are attacked today. Um, so you need to make sure that you're protecting your email and you're providing training to your end users on what to do when they receive an email and make sure that they're going through the proper checks. It takes roughly 10 seconds just to go through who sent it to you, where did it come from, you know does it look legitimate was i expecting this is this something i'm being asked to do is this something that i would expect to be asked by this person in this manner um you know if you're being asked to wire money by your ceo or buy gift cards uh for the company and then and then you know send them you know get the information to the ceo a lot of times you got to pause and wonder would the ceo ever ask me to go buy 50 gift cards for 500 dollars a piece um, Google gift cards and then you know get back to them with you know when they have the cards like call me or, or, or reply back to me um, there's just certain things that you have to look for the other obvious thing poor poor English poor command of the English language that's a huge one um, if, if it doesn't read right sound right things are misspelled things aren't don't you know 
go with what you would consider proper English dialect, that should be a huge red flag for you. And you know, you need to be training your employees on this stuff. There's training awareness programs out there. We offer one through our company at Exact IT. Um, and there's a lot of options out there for you to get cyber awareness training in your company. So that's it, folks. Uh, I'm wrapping up the video for today. I hope you uh, were enlightened. I hope you learned some things about hacking and ransomware and cyber attacks that maybe you didn't know before I started this video. And if you have any questions, if there's anything that you would like to know, please drop them in the comments below. And remember to like our video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us out tremendously and we would uh, put out more content around this stuff when you do that stuff. It helps us with YouTube to gain more uh, subscribers and viewers. So it helps us out a lot and it helps me want to put out more content. And if there's anything you want to uh, hear me talk about or want me to demo or show you around cybersecurity um, or something, you're just like, that would be really cool if they did that. Drop it in the comments below. We'd love to hear uh, what interests you and what questions you have about cybersecurity. So that's it for me, folks. I'll see you on the other side. Have a good one. Take care.